Hello everyone, this is the great lord and master, Asaran the Eternal, for what is going to be a part two to the Pulse of Creation video. I have to make this video. What I discovered when I analyzed the numbers more is just astounding. This is telling you that the Fibonacci sequence is the single digit code. They work together like like a gear. They are one and the same. Uh, what you'll see here is the stripped down version of the pie shape in the code in a wheel. But over here I amplified the actual columns themselves. And now what I did was I separated the 24 digit string that is produced by the Fibonacci sequence when you reduce all the numbers to their lowest number. Uh, I put them in two rows of 12. And this is sort of like the true tarot cube when the outer, the outer cube structure cards are put into two rows of six in the Oseron tarot spiral when the outer row of cards is put in two, two rows. Well, this is, this is just like that. So I got it in two rows of 12. The first row, 1 through 12, and then the second row, 13 through 24. And when you do that, all the numbers uh, cancel out to 9. But it's more than just that. It also separates itself into a Kundalini grid, just like the Kundalini grid. <laughs> but except this time, it separates itself every 4 numbers instead of 3. What happens is the top is 0, 0, 0, and then you go four spaces and 3, 6, 9, go four more than 3, 6, 9, and four more and 9, 9, 9. So it separates, it, so it, it keeps the Kundalini conduits isolated and intact. But now that 24 digit string of numbers, if you add all those numbers together, it forms uh, 117. And I, I actually for, forgot to mention this in the first video, but it forms 117. And there's two ways to look at 117. You can either look at, look at that as 2, 7, or 1 and 8. And you know, we already know the 2, 7 is a major player in this thing. But the 1 and 8, that code that is produced on top, the 2772 code, adds to 18. So each section actually adds to 18. And the 18, if you recall from the octahedron kundalini grid, are the male and female receptive sites that link all the cubes together to infinity. So 18 is huge. And 27 is huge, as you know, I've discussed. But over here, um, what this is, if you recall, if you, if you recall, if you take the 24 digit string and build it from the top down and build another one right next to it from the bottom up and then add those numbers together, it forms this, but it's separated into two distinct uh, mirror image sections. Well, this is an amplified view or a zoomed in view of half of that section with one section of the other half in play so you can see what it does because it's not an exact mirror image it's actually an inverted mirror image so this top section is displayed in its exact opposite both mirrored and reversed on the bottom same exact thing but this too also separates into groups se separates itself into a kundalini grid this is the dead center and if you go four spaces, one, two, three, then the fourth one is three, six, nine, one, two, three, four is three, six, nine, and one, two, three, is zero, nine, nine. Just like that. But it also does more than that. All the numbers, you'll notice that the numbers do some amazing, there's so much amazing things that's happening here, but it does some amazing things. If you recall from the octahedron kundalini grid video, the cube matrix, the actual numbers that form the cube itself, are 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, and 8. Well, those numbers separate, if you join the first two, the second two, and the third two together, that reveals itself as 3, 9, and 6, complete with vortex math separation. Well, what happens on both halves of this, of this is it reveals that cube matrix numbers too, but it, it puts them in a little bit different of an order. 
it puts them in 2, 4, 1, 8, and then 5, 7. And it's separating them. The first two are the masculine numbers and become 6. The two middle numbers are the 1 and the 8, and they become 9. And they're both, and, and it's masculine and feminine. The ones on the other end are all feminine, and those become 3. And this is revealed by half of that code, and the mirror image is on the other side. And when you... And that reveals 6, 9, and 3, and the other way it's 3, 9, and 6, so it keeps going back and forth, oscillating from 3, 6, 9 to 6, 9, 3, you know, to infinity, flipping back and forth. But now you're going to notice that the numbers are paired with their own number. So in this first case here, you got 1 and 1 for 2, and the next number will always either be 1 and 8 or 8 and 1, and it flips itself when it does that. So if it shows up as 1, 8 first, the next time it will be 8, 1, and the time after that it will be 1, 8. So it keeps alternating and flipping. So you get 1, 1, and then 1, 8, and then 2, 2, and then 3, 6, 9, and then 5, 5, and then 8, 1, then 4, 4, 3, 6, 7, 7, 1, 8, 8, 8, and then the dead center with 9, 9, 9, then 8, 8, and then it, then it does the same exact thing with the other side going the other way. Well, you're going to you're also going to notice from the, uh, if you recall from the octahedron kundalini video, it shows the uh, Yggdrasil uh, and it reveals a cube matrix. Well, the kundalini, the, the numbers that represent kundalini, 3 and 6, are in the spheres that are 2 and 7. And as I've said a thousand times, the fluids of the body is where the kundalini enters first. It saturates your body with your own liquids in the body. And the you know, primal masculine aspect of electricity is the two. Well, on every 396 uh, sequence, the numbers on either side of it will either reduce to a 7 or a 2. So in this case, you got 369, and then on one side you have 2, and then uh, the other side you have a 5. So you got 5 and then 6, 7 to form a 7. The next one is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which becomes 2. And it keeps doing that, so it's revealing the 2772 components in this aspect of it as well. But now you're going to notice in each number group, in, in each number group between the, the Kundalini grid, it has three numbers. In those form, uh, you know, 4 and 2 become 6, 1 and 8 become 9, and 5 and 7 become 3. But if you add that 9 that's in, in between those, it reveals the tarot card, R215, the devil, which becomes 6. It reveals R218, the moon, which becomes 9. And it reveals R221, the world, which becomes 3. But uh, the most popular way that people lay out the tarot cards is in three rows of 7. The uh, tarot trumps in three rows of 7, and they keep the fool separated. That's the way most people do it. Well. The entire bottom row, if you do it like that, is showing up here. So the devil is first. That's the first of the bottom row. Then it goes two cards and becomes 18. Then it goes two more cards and becomes 21. And that is the whole bottom row if you lay out the tarot trunks in three even rows of seven. So that's pretty amazing as well. And uh, one thing about this grid here, you're going to notice this grid. Remember, this is uh, six. This is six segments of that root code pi shape. And remember, this code here tells you to use 72 and 27. Because if you recall, just real quickly, if you add up all the numbers in between the, this nine and this nine, it becomes uh, 72. If you isolate the numbers between the nines in the small section, it becomes 27. So this is telling you to use that formula. Uh, 72 numbers in a circle here. It's absolutely amazing what this is. In the, you know, oh yes, in this, uh, you know, um, hexagonal shape in the middle of this is a cube. I mean, if you were to connect these lines, the points on the one, that this is telling you it's a cube, and this gives you all the tools for the cube matrix. So this is telling you how to build the uh, octahedron kundalini grid, even telling you to use two numbers, because it, it, this uses two numbers that tell you to, it's not telling you to go backwards and forwards per se, but 
it is telling you that because it's showing you there's two ones, there's two twos, there's two fives, there's two fours, there's two sevens, and there's two eights. And it, and it is telling you to go forwards and backwards because this is exactly what it's doing. It's completely reversed and mirrored going this way, and it's completely reversed and mirrored going this way, just like the Yggdrasil when it reveals the cube, the 3D vortex math cube. Exact same thing. This is telling you, in this case, Fibonacci is telling you that it is the single digit code. There is no separation. They are brother and sister. They are one. They're just different flavors of the same, of the same, uh, the same story here. There's no separation at all. It's completely perfect and congruent. There are no flaws in this at all. And this is nature telling you the story through numbers. This is absolutely amazing. This is, this is, the Fibonacci sequence telling you the single digit code is. Va valid, and, and this is also the single digit code telling you that Fibonacci is valid, they're each validating the other. It's absolutely amazing. So I think I have everything um, covered this time. I actually made a video before this, but my fridge was making all kinds of racket and I forgot a bunch of shit. So I was, <laughs> I wanted to make another video, but well, the reason I'm making the, this video over that other one is because I figured out after I made it this connection with uh, the numbers on the that are directly touching the Kundalini row add up to seven with the numbers that you know the five and the two is seven or two with seven and four for eleven and then two becomes twenty two and then you know. That would be 14, which is 5, temperance. So the interplay of the tarot is always ever-present in all these, showing how powerful the tarot is, but even more importantly, showing you how important the single-digit code of 0 through 9 is. So thank you, and namaste.